What's going on everyone? Welcome back to LeMaster Tech and in today's video I'm going to show you how to make a simple four function calculator using C++ in Microsoft Visual Studio. So if you've been following along in the C++ uh, tutorial series, or even if you're just um, familiar with the very basics of C++, this is a great project to get familiar with uh, user inputs, user outputs, displaying things to the console window, and performing some basic operations with inputs you take from the user. So this is gonna be kind of the first program we've built where uh, you actually get user data in real time and then process it. So uh, to do that, we're gonna start just by including IO stream and CMath, which we've seen before. And CMath is just basically gonna let us do basic mathematical functions if we need it. And then IO stream is uh, how we display things onto the console and pull feedback from the console. And this is kind of our basic setup for our main function that we've had in every video so far. So uh, to follow along, just make sure that your code looks like this in the beginning. And let's get into actually writing the code. So the first thing we want to do is define our variables. And for this project, uh, we're really only going to need three variables. We're going to need the operation that we're using to um, either add, subtract, multiply, or divide. And then we need two numbers that we're doing the operation to. Um, so to do that, we're going to start by defining a string for the operation. And then um, we're going to define, I'm going to use doubles for my two numbers just so they can be fractional if I want them to be fractional. You could do it with integers if you wanted it to only be integer based math. That would be really simple, but you get a little more flexibility if you make them doubles. And I just want to take this opportunity to show you we can do one thing that we haven't talked about yet in the C++ series. You can define multiple variables of the same variable type on the same line right here. So uh, if I don't want to give them initial values, or even if I did, um, you can define multiple variables in the same row. Now we're going to get the initial values from the user, so I'm not going to put equals anything for operation or number. Like we've talked about, you don't have to give them initial values when you define them. And so these are the only three variables we're gonna need, um, but it is nice to know if you had a project with hundreds of variables, you could have all your strings defined in one place, all your doubles defined in one place. Um, and that can really uh, kind of clean up your code a little bit when all's said and done. Okay, so now let's take a look at actually get the user input. All right, so that's gonna be the next section of our code. And to do this, uh, we're gonna start with C out, which we've used a few times before, which is console out. So it's um, just basically us giving the user a prompt. And in this case, the prompt is gonna be enter first number, just like that. And we're gonna put a space there because uh, it, it looks kind of good. Um, <laughs> and then just make sure you finish every line with a semicolon. Again, um, I'll kind of keep hammering on basic formatting while we're still doing basic tutorials. Um, you need every line to end with a semicolon if it's like the end of a statement. So then we actually want to take some feedback back in. And for this, it should kind of make sense to you. Flip the direction of your arrow keys. So instead of like less than, less than sign, um, it's greater than, greater than sign for something that we're pulling back in from the console. And this is going to show up as a second row where the user then enters their data here. So it's going to be C in. And then we're going to write whatever they punch in into number one, our variable number one. Um, just like that. So this, if I were to run this, we're not doing anything with it yet, but it should run okay if I run it. Um, let's take a look. Okay. And so it's asking me to enter first number. And if I go ahead and uh, punch in a 12 and then hit enter, it's not going to do anything, but you can see there it was uh, prompting me to enter a number and then waiting for me to put feedback back in there. So we're going to copy this same basic format of prompt and then response. Um, two more two more times and so we're gonna do it in order we'll get the number first and then we'll get the operation and then we'll get the second number uh, so we'll say enter operation for the second one and then parentheses I'm just gonna kind of tell them what they can do because if you think about like a calculator you would see all the buttons that you can press so you would see like plus minus multiplication division you would know whether or not something was an option so I think giving them the chance to see what operations are their options is not a bad idea. And then we will just say enter second number like that. 
And so I'm not gonna run this again because it's gonna look just like what we did for enter first number. Um, it's just gonna ask us three prompts and then we'll put stuff in, but it's not doing anything with it yet. Um, and so what we want is the last bit is gonna be like if else statement checking um, entered, spell it right, checking entered operation, okay? Um, so I'm working on better comments in my code because I want it to be easier to follow along with. So this section, we're actually going to create an if else uh, series of statements that check what operation was just entered and display an output based on that. So let's go ahead and get started. And this is gonna be our first look at the if statement in C++ as well. So if you've been following along with this series, um, if you haven't, go check them out. But if you have been following along with this series, you've seen variable types and some basic string and numerical operations. This is gonna be your first introduction to if else statements, and that's really cool. So um, if, and then in parentheses, you wanna put your um, kind of if check statement. So if operation is equal to, and we'll start with addition because it's an easy one. That's all you need to put in your parentheses, but then you make these curly brackets, and inside these curly brackets is where we put what to do in the event that that is true. So if the operation is plus, we just want to display onto the console number one plus number two, and it knows how to interpret that uh, one plus two just like that. And then we put our semicolon and then our closed curly brackets, and then right after that closed curly bracket, you can put else if, um, and then we're just gonna basically copy this uh, for each of those if uh, statements for each of our operators. I'm saying uh, a lot, I'm gonna try to stop doing that. So else if operation is minus now, we want to just see out number one minus number two, semicolon. Make sure you have your uh, formatting correct. The indentation doesn't matter as much in C++ as it would in like Python. Um, <laughs> there's another one. Uh, so just try to make it look in a way that feels good to you because strictly speaking, there are no rules about line breaks. So this could go on for numeric. This could be one line of code, really, if you used the semicolons and curly brackets in the right spot. So pick a formatting that works for you. And I'm going to kind of just copy this if, uh, turn it into an else if, and do this four times. Uh, you can even see the, there's no like automatic formatting it's gonna do for you. It may or may not just have stuff jump around and put stuff on a new line sometimes. The default Visual Studio code might actually separate it out like this, I think it does, where it puts this curly bracket as like the, its own line. You can keep it this way if you want. Again, it really isn't going to impact the functioning of your code. It's just what do you prefer? And um, if your company or project team has a standard that they're trying to follow, follow their standard. Don't, don't step on their toes just because it doesn't matter technically. All right, so we have multiplication and division in here, and let's do one more thing, which is just else now, instead of an else if, and else is just gonna mean they entered something that isn't any of those operations. So we just want to see out, just like the other ones, but now we'll say not a recognized operation, just like that. And so basically we're saying, okay, you didn't give me any of the four functions that I told you we would be able to do with this calculator. So I'm just gonna give you an error saying not a recognized operation like that, okay? So let's go ahead and run this. Let's see if we actually captured all scenarios, okay? So let's say enter first number, let's do 23.5 because it should be able to handle decimals. Let's do divided by and let's do 2.7, something that's not easy. Okay, 8.7037. I actually don't know if that's exactly right, but it must be pretty close. Um, just kind of looking at the numbers here, that makes sense. Um, so let's do it again. Uh, let's go ahead and say enter first number 123 um, times 2.678. And we get 329.394, that looks right to me. Let's go ahead and just test the scenario of entering something stupid for an operation. So let's say 12, um, I don't know, uh, Pete as an operation, and then second number 23, not a recognized operation. 
there you go. So this is pretty rudimentary code still. We're obviously not into like really advanced code in any way, but if you're following along in the C++ tutorial series, this is a really cool start to start getting user input and doing something with that data. We're using numerical data types, we're using strings, we're using if else statements, and we're printing to the console, we're taking data back from the console. So this is a really great beginner project. I hope you found it useful. If you did, be sure to leave a like on the video, subscribe to the channel, let me know in the comments if you had any questions or what you'd like to see in a future video on the channel. And if you love the content I've been putting out and you want to become a super supporter of the channel, feel free to check out the Patreon link in the description of this video. And as always, thanks for watching and good luck with your code. Thanks. Bye.